Hello everyone, this is Teresa Benson, Product Marketing Manager here at Redline Controls, and we're continuing our discussion about alarms and triggers. So in the previous episode, we talked about data match and mismatch, which is what we're looking at here. When an alarm is active, it is red. If it is weight accepted, it is gray. We set that up in our alarm viewer primitive inside Crimson. We also have some triggers on that value tag which turn a light on or off depending on the condition uh, in comparison with the set point. Today we're going to look at absolute high and low and talk a little bit about priorities uh, in the alarms. So here are my original tags. I put them in a folder I called original and then I copied that folder twice to get my in and out folders. I then went ahead and created a second integer tag. In this case, uh, I now have a high and a low. And then I changed val to valve and light to on. And so that is where we came up with those additional eight tags that you see here. Uh, the set point high and low for these two items is set in a program that runs right when I start up my HMI. I'll show you where that lives in a moment. Then these valve values are using the same get up down data um, function that I love to use when testing out changing data values on a tag. Uh, the difference is I wrote a little if else statement that says if that on flag tag is true, then I want to go ahead and change the value of valve. However, if I turn it off, I want that to be zero, just so that we can simulate some on off and see how things work uh, that way. And I did the same on this one as well. So let's just quickly look at the few things that I put into my startup program. I set some values for the input high-low at 8 and 2, uh, output high-low at 11 and 3. I gave the original set point a value rather than it hanging out at 0 every time I start up the system. And then I turned both of my input and output flag tags on. So that's what I've done. I renamed the program startup. This works just like our data tags, just like our display pages. You can hit F2, right click and rename. Either one will work. And so I called this program startup. And then if I go to display pages, here's the screen that we've been working with. If we go up one more on this global page, there are actions that you can take on tick, on update of the display page, on startup or power up. And so I took that program here. I'll go ahead and delete it out. I came to my resource pane and I can just drag startup over to be in the startup section so that when I send my database to the HMI, startup will run and we'll see those values update on the screen. All right. Now what I want to do is set some set points for the input and output valves. So I'm going to come here to my alarms tab in the editing pane. I'll go ahead and choose absolute high for this first one. You can see I've typed something in already. This one says input valve is above high set point. We then need to tell it what are we comparing the uh, valve value 2. In this case, it's set point high, which I just dragged over like that. I'm going to keep it on manual accept so that we can see what happens when we start applying priorities to things. So I have a priority of 1 on this one. I then did an absolute low and I'm going to put input valve is below low set point. Um, I am comparing it against set put point low, which I've done here. I've given this one a priority of two so that we can see how the colors change when we update our alarm primitive. And now I want to go ahead and create similar alarms for my output valve. So one of the quick things I can do is copy from, I want to copy the alarms from input valve over to output valve. And now we can see that um, the event name needs to change. I'm going to call this output 
valve. Let's give it a different priority. I'm going to give it four and output valve here and I will give this a priority five. Now something that I want you to notice, I don't have to change these two tags and the reason for that is because of how I created my folder structure. When you self-refer to other items in the same folder, you don't have to designate in dot set point high or in dot set point low like I needed to in my program. So here, this first part right here indicates it's in a folder called in and then there's the tag name. Because these alarms are on tra on tags in the same folder, I can just refer to set point high and set point low. When I copy those over because I've kept the naming conventions the same, I don't need to make an update there. It refers to the out set point high and the out set point low. Okay, so let's go ahead and send these all down. I've got some different priorities on the various alarms and let's see how that impacts what we see here. So on this screen, this is our original screen, we can see there are a lot of different things going on. The gray means an inactive weight accepted alarm. So the alarm condition occurred, it is no longer current. However, we are letting the operator know that it exists. Now you can see everything is red or gray and that's it. So let's take a look instead at what these alarms look like when we apply priority. Now I'm going to use the pop out menu feature. If you aren't familiar with this feature, I encourage you to look at our converting from Crimson 3.0 to 3.1 video on our YouTube channel. I go into some detail there. I'm going to choose this priority alarm page. So this is very similar in look to the previous one, but we can see that there are some differences in terms of the color coding being used to represent priority. Now let's see where that is coming into play because it's all the same words, it's all the same language, but we can see what's urgent, we can see what's less urgent, and so forth depending on how our alarming conventions are set up across the HMI. So I'm going to come back into Crimson and these colors are actually defined in the alarm primitive itself. So I'm going to open up, I'm in the priority uh, page, I'm going to open up this alarm viewer and before we had used priority colors set to no. So that means all active regardless of priority are red and wait accept is always gray. If I choose use priority colors, now what happens is this active goes away and I come to the priorities color tab and I've actually defined these colors. They come pre-populated. If that works for your application, that's great. I went with a traditional sort of uh, rainbow color approach without green because green means good and we already have that defined over here as no alarms present. So we can now determine at a glance which are the most critical alarms versus other things. And so that's all defined inside this alarms primitive. If I look at my original, I don't have it set up that way and that's why everything is red and gray. So there you go. We just touched on absolute high, absolute low, and alarm priorities. Look for more tips and tricks here on our YouTube channel and thanks for watching.